gonna keep going, goddammit. What do you do? <laughs> wow. Oh, it's just Frank Westerns and Logan. The truth, Eros Spence Jr. Oh, 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 it's a big left hand. Gervonta Davis. Shout out to the almighty L-D-B-C. The Lions damn Boston community. If you didn't know, now. Oh, 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 all right. What's goody goody with everybody? Shout out to everybody that came in today. Yes, sir. We got 14 watching. We got 14 in the house so far. So I appreciate everybody that's coming in. I appreciate everybody that came in last night. I'm talking about late last night. And I hope you spring for it, baby. I'm talking about you set mm-hmm. your clock for it. All right. If you forgot, man, go ahead and do it right now. Now, of course, uh, uh, I'm with my guy. My partner, yes, sir, no other than my man from Dallas, Texas. We talking about knockout boxing. What's good with you, knockout? Oh, man, I'm excited, man. Everybody else forgot to set their clocks, man. Shout out to everybody that set their clocks this morning. Everybody that's in here, man. Everybody else forgot to set their damn clocks and shit, man. You know what I'm saying? But, man, uh, some good fights, man. Some good press conferences last week, man. We got, you know, all access, David Benavidez, Kayla Play. We got a lot of shit to talk about, man. Oh yeah, I got oh, yeah. to ask you about man, because people been on me, man. They don't agree with me about this rehydration clause. I want to see what I want to see. What you think, man. Wow. We got to talk about all this shit, man. Man, now, I, now, okay. For the record, I don't know how you feel about it, and I don't know if you know how I feel about it. So I don't, I don't. So don't tell me okay. till we get to. Uh, I don't okay. know how you feel okay. about okay. it. Okay, there you go. All right, there you I go. So you yet. heard that, okay? Yeah, I want, I want to hear, I want to hear what you think. I want to see if I'm tripping, man. Okay, all right. We got 25 in the building and climbing. Let's see who all up in here. All right, we got my man Shy Town Finest is up in the building. What's going on, Shy Town? Yes, sir. We got Jaguar Black, baby. What's good with you? And no, I am not from Dallas, Texas. All right. I know it doesn't matter, but I'm just saying I'm from Chicago. All right. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. That's right. All right, yes, sir. We know how to do it over here. All right, no country people over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Dallas, though, Jaguar. <laughs> well, he, from, he from Dallas, though. All right, <laughs> all right. What's going on, RP? What's going on, Ray Patterson? What's going on with Achille Nature in the building? What's going on, KD? What's going on, King D? Is up in here. What's going on, Terry W? What's going on with you? Felix Nunez, what's happening? And we got my man, the Keggy, is up in here. What's going on, Keggy? What's going on with you? Yes, sir. R.R. West is in the building, baby. Yes, right. sir. He is up bright and early. Yes, sir. All right. Who else we got up in here? We got my man, Thomas Hill, is up in the building. What's going on, right. Thomas? How you feel, man? All right. Yes, sir. We got Edward Platt is up in here. What's going on? Morning to you, my sir. All right, appreciate you. All right, so far, we're 40 in here. So far, oh, we got not me coming in that back door, baby. Yes, sir, I have to put the lock on it. All right, but anyway, I uh, uh, appreciate everybody coming out so far. You know what to do. You know what to do. Yeah, hit that like button. All right, yes, sir, JJ is in the building. Jay Grant and Jafari Caesar is up in here. Yes, sir, make sure y'all all hit the like button as you come in. All right, yes, sir. So let's get this show on 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 the road. What's going man, on? Man, let's get to it, man. Before we um before we get to some of these stories and the main fight and stuff we're gonna cover, man. I gotta talk to you about the big heavyweight fight that just got finalized, man. We're about to get undisputed in the heavyweight division. Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk, they didn't agree to fight. Um, man, you know, heavyweight, heavyweight said, and they're gonna be fighting April 29th. So remember. On um, April 22nd, you got Tank and Ryan. Then on the 29th, you got Virgil and Stan Jonas, and you're about to have Fury and Alexander Usyk, man. Talk about Ooh. the significance of that fight, man. And, you know, are you excited for it? Well, what you think on Fury and, Us- and Usyk being done now, man? You know, this going to surprise a lot of people. Tyson Fury stands at 6'9", uh, um, 6'10", maybe, I would say, you know. Uh, uh, but Tyson Fury is a big puncher when he lands. Uh, uh, Tyson Fury is a big guy. 
But one thing about Tyson Fury, he knows how to box as a heavyweight. What's going on, Queen, Queen, my queen? All right. What's on, Mr. Mechanical? What's good with you? All right. But Dante Hall, I see you. Yes, yeah, sir. See, one thing about it. All right. Uh, uh, Tyson Fury doesn't have the feet. He doesn't have the feet that Usyk has. Now, Usyk mm -hmm. is a heavyweight. He campaigned at the heavyweight division, but he moves like a middleweight. Now, of course, he's going to have to use his angles. When he's fighting a guy like Tyson Fury. Now, we all remember Deontay Wilder fight. Let's just go with that. All right. Now, of course, uh, 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 Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury likes to lean on you. He likes to use his body. He likes to use his weight to get that advantage. And one thing about it, with that advantage, uh, 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 Yusuf is not going to let that happen. Yusuf is going to roll out of there. And next thing you know, Tyson Fury is going to look, and he's behind him, on the side of him, slapping him with that left hand. Now, Tyson Fury has his hands full. I don't think, I don't believe that Tyson Fury can beat Orlando Yusey. But the thing is, we all remember Don King. Don King brought us a lot of great heavyweights. And this is the only thing missing. This is the only thing missing. We need a undisputed heavyweight champion. That's important in the uh, uh, boxing community. Because what they say, once the heavyweight division goes, so do boxing. So they lead off right now. I ain't talking about that bigger weight. I ain't talking about that. All right? I'm talking about the heavyweight and the cruiserweight and on down. So I'm excited about that knockout. I'm excited yeah. about we finally will get a undisputed. A undisputed heavyweight champion, and this mm -hmm. by the time this happened, by the time this happened, so I'm very I mean, excited. yeah, I, I'm excited about it too because to me, it comes down to um, how Tyson Fury can deal with the southpaw angles and the stance of Alexander Usyk, and how Alexander Usyk can deal with the size and the length and and just the the the, the mammoth man that is Tyson Fury because Tyson Fury, the last time. We seen him against the Southpaw was Otto Wilder. Otto Wilder had him getting 47 stitches in his damn head. Otto Wilder gave him a lot of trouble in that fight. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then Alexander Usyk has your time ran out because you fighting, you really a cruiserweight fighting a heavyweight. Like, for instance, he came in his last fight weighing like 220, 225 pound, bro, and he only like 6'3". Tyson Fury, 6'9", he going to be in that bitch like 265, 270. How? How do you deal with that? You know what I'm saying? If you Alexander mm -hmm. Usyk, so and then it's just it's something about Usyk, man. The gold medals and shit, the the way that he went undisputed at cruiserweight, um, what he's been doing to heavyweight, like the smart money and everything. Say, all right, bro, Fury gonna win this fight, but it's just something about Usyk, bro. It's something about him where he just a dog and he yeah. he always find a way. Mm -hmm. And right when you think like, nah, he too small or. He ain't got enough power. He ain't got that. He just find a way to be whooping on these dudes' ass, man. Mm -hmm. To be whooping on their ass and shit. And if Fury don't, if Fury don't try to fight him like he fought um Wilder and try to use his weight and try to come forward and bully Usyk and he mm -hmm. try to like, box with Usyk, man, Usyk could Usyk could do something in that fight, man. So I'm excited for it. Like you said, man, it's it's good to have a heavyweight to uh undisputed champion they're gonna be doing it in Wembley Stadium so I know that shit gonna be lit and the thing I like about it is when you look at the schedule so you'll have Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia that Saturday night before wow. and then Saturday on the 29th since they fighting over in the UK you know Usyk and Fury gonna be doing the afternoon and shit so you're gonna have that afternoon car probably be over about five or six and then right at seven or eight you're gonna have that Virgil Ortiz and Munch standing on this car so April 29th just gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a hell of a day of boxing, man. Man, let, let me, boxing. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you too, man. I'm done. though. go ahead. What up? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, now, you said that Tyson Fury and Usyk is going to be taking place that afternoon. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. They fighting in the UK, so it's going to be in the afternoon because they got to fight at nighttime there. So it's going to okay. be in the afternoon. Okay. Now you remember Tyson Fury has a co-promotion with Bob Aaron and, and, and ESPN Plus. Uh, yeah. um, so are they going to show that fight ESPN? Probably uh, so. Uh, during that day. Okay. Probably so. It, it's not official yet, but that's what they did last time. Remember when Tyson Fury fought Dillian White, you had to watch it on ESPN Plus. Okay. So I, I, I'm I'm yeah. betting that they probably going to have it over there. Like have um 
Because who he who is uh, Frank Warren is his promoter over there or whatever? Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. whatever Frank, network Frank, Frank very promotion, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, whatever whatever promotion they use over in the UK, the UK people probably gotta watch it on Skyport Sports or BT or whatever the hell it is, and then um ESPN plus probably gonna get it over here in America, but it's gonna be showing for sure. Okay, it's gonna be okay. showing it's gonna be showing over here for sure. So it it'll be um it's gonna be a good it's gonna be a good fight, man. Um but let, let's keep going, man. Something that we all knew that we just got to touch on, um, that we all knew was coming down the pipeline. Uh, they're now reporting that, that Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko is finalized. Um, and it's a great fight that's getting lost in Tank Ryan, Benavidez, Plant, now Fury Usyk. I, it's crazy. Undisputed at the lightweight division. It's kind of falling under the radar a little bit, but it's a big fight. It's a great fight for Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko's legacy. Um, you know, now, now that we know that fight is going to be on May 20th, and we got yet another big fight in boxing, man. What do you um what do you got on Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko finally coming to terms and finally agreeing that um that they're gonna get it on on May 20th, man? Well, you know, good for Devin Haney. Because listen, I, I understand what Bill said, Bill Haney father slash trainer i understand what he's saying that his son gonna campaign at 135 for the rest of the year okay i understand that but let's be realistic okay he can barely make the weight now or he barely can make the weight when he was getting ready to fight Camboza. but i'm glad now that lomachenko finally got the job done finally they came together because his time was running out his time was running out. I know. I get it. He had a nutrition, everything like that. That's good, fine, and dandy. But mm -hmm. with the Javante Davis and, and Ryan Garcia debacle, uh, that fight has been pretty much overshadowed. Now, that is an important fight. Lomachenko took second thoughts about that fight. He didn't want that fight really like he at first wanted it. Because once he saw Devin Haney looking like a heavyweight, middleweight, then he kind of like thought about it. But now, if you want to be great, and this is with everybody, you got to fight the best. And the way Devin Haney's thinking, the best is Lomachenko right now. The best he can do is Lomachenko right now. Now, that's a good fight. That's a great fight. Because well, as we saw last night, things can go awry. Or things can happen. All right, this is the sport of boxer. We know things can happen. So I'm excited about that fight. I'm excited about it. It's not just PBC and Showtime. We are getting these fights. I said in January, 2023 might be the best year of boxing that we have seen in the last couple of years. And I think they are doing what they're saying. And now, of course, Devin Haney, I think he's ready. He's young. He's fresh. And he want to make a statement. Now, mm -hmm. of course, now when he moves to 140, that's gonna be a different type of party, baby. All right, that's a different type of party up there. All right, but right now, let's watch and concentrate on Lomachenko and Devin Haney. Now, mm -hmm. Devin Haney was pretty much wanting to have that fight over in Saudi Arabia. All right, they pay a better top dollar over there, and he wanted to hey take his talents over there. But I think they agreed on Las Vegas. I'm not for sure, but I think they did. Now, would they do big numbers? I don't know. It's hard to tell, uh, but we're going to see. But that's all I have on that. Uh, 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 congratulations to Dev Haney. He finally got a Lomachenko fight. This is what he's been waiting on. This is what he's been wanting. And I'm talking about this before it became undisputed. So, all right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, so I I'm with you on all of that. Um. For me, though, I want Devin Haney, um, after this fight, to do what's in the best interest of his career, and that's probably move up to 140 pounds. Now, there's a monkey wrench in that, and it's going to be something that has to do with optics, but as far as the fight with Devin Haney and Lomachenko, great fight. Can't wait to see Devin defend against Loma and see if Loma um, is who they say he is, and, and we get to see a great fight on May 20th. But what also came out of that OG, which is kind of – which is kind of crazy, you know what I mean? Like, which is something that we got to talk about. So the WBA, they tweeted out, and Mauricio, I mean, and Gilberto Mendoza tweeted out that after this Tank and Ryan fight and after the Haney and Loma fight, they are going to make, they're going to order the winners to fight each other. So the regular champion, Tank Davis, or 
will probably be ordered to fight Devin Haney um, as part of their little one belt resolution program that came out over the weekend too. So they talking about ordering the fight um, that we all been talking about not to jump ahead because they both got big fights coming up, but you know, what we, we doing this boxing talk shit. We got to talk about that shit, man. WBA ordering tank and Devin. Do you think it'll block the fight from happening? Actually, is it something that's a good thing? What, what do you think of them saying that they about to order this fight? Um, after these fights get through in, in April and May. Uh, well, I heard, you know, I heard some rumblings about that. And I heard some rumblings about it that it's not true. I heard some rumblings about that the WBA is trying to get rid of. See, let me explain. It's what. true, though. Just, just so you, before you cook on it, it is true. Like, I, I read the I read okay. the tweets from the WBA myself. Okay. They basically, they didn't say we're going to order the fight, but they said after we see what happens with Tank and Ryan and Devin and Loma, we're going to make a decision on our, our part of our resolution program to get rid of all our belts. There basically, you go. meaning the, the regular champion and the super champion, they're going to consolidate that shit. So it's going to be ordered, basically. Go okay. Ahead. Now, there you go. That's the problem. Uh, um, that's what they focused on when he said that uh, 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 about the bills. Now, of course, we know that Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, the belt is not up. Why? Because it's at a catch weight. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, mm -hmm. the belt is not up at all. Now, of course, the, uh, uh, Devontae Davis will be moving up to 140. Now, of course, I'm not Devontae Davis. I'm sorry. Devin Devin Haney, Haney. Devin Haney, right. yeah. He'll be moving up to 140. Then you got uh, 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 um, uh, Devontae Davis. Now, they are thinking about stripping Javante Davis is what I'm hearing. Because they are trying to get rid of that secondary belt and make it one belt. One champion. Just like right now at the middleweight 154 division. It's only one champion at 154. That's all. There's no other champion at 154 but one. So that's what they're trying to do to WBA. They had promised that they are going to start getting rid of their secondary belts and mm -hmm. this is what they're trying to do. But Tank uh, we're going to see how it work out because whoever he fights, he's going to have to fight either the champion at WBA uh, 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 of that belt or the super champion, put it that way. And uh, and they're going to have just one champion. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, a super champion can go up another weight class and become a mandatory of the champion of that weight class. You know, that's what a super champion is. So this is what I'm hearing. Now, I'm not for sure. Don't quote me on it, Okay. This is what uh, I hear around these YouTube streets, all right? But um, they can strip Javante Davis if if uh, 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 they see fit because he is not defending that belt. Then this mm -hmm. is a voluntary. This is a voluntary fight. You're fighting at a catch weight at 136, so that means the belt is not up for grabs. You yeah, know? they, they but, already said they're going to wait to see what happened with him and Ryan. So they okay. they they, they okay. said it's a big fight, big enough fight for them to wait to see what happens. So he ain't getting stripped before his fight. He's gonna have his belt. Right. The thing is, they're gonna order him to fight Devin the same way, or the winner of Devin and Loma, the same way that they, they just ordered Aries Landy Laura to fight Triple G, but Triple G ducked him and vacated his belt. That right. fight gonna get ordered. Then they gonna make a decision, and that's where it's gonna be like. You got my brother Jay Grant Jr., you got me, you got Dank Father, you got BFTB, then you got me. That's what we all going to be looking like, who going to blink first, because if they order the fight and then Devin vacate and move up, you already know, oh, man, Devin Haney ducking Tank Davis. Right, if they right. order the fight and then Tank Davis like, man, I ain't nobody mandatory. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Then Tank Davis then duck Devin Haney. like So everybody looking like, man, order this shit. <laughs> And right. I want it ordered because I want them to negotiate the fight, but they got to be smart about it. Because in the in the WBA's sanctioning body, when they order the fight, a 75-25 split goes in favor of the champion, which would be Devin Haney. And we love us some Devin Haney, but, bro, if they order some 75-25 shit in favor of Devin Haney, y'all know Tank ain't taking that shit, man. Right. So no, if they order the shit, they got to be realistic about it because they can adjust it. They need to order that shit. And understand who the A side, who the B side, if you really want to order it to make the fight happen. So if I'm the WBA, I'm ordering that shit in a way to where you got to be fair to uh, you got to be fair to both sides. Like just like Devin Haney shouldn't have to take no 75, 25 against him. Order right. that shit about 60, 40 in favor of Tank and then mm -hmm. get that shit popping so they can actually negotiate, man. And that way mm -hmm. we stand a chance to get the fight. Because I tell you what, if that fight does happen later in the year. 
based on what they do at the beginning of the year, whoever win that fight is fighter of the year in 2023, something neither one of them have accomplished. If Devin mm-hmm. Haney fights Lomachenko and beats his ass and mm-hmm. then stays at 135 and fights and beats Tank later on in the year, Devin Haney fighter of the year, I don't care what else, I don't care what nobody else do. Like, it don't even matter what they do. If Tank mm-hmm. Davis beat Hector Luis Garcia, beats Ryan Garcia, and then fights Devin Haney and beats him at the end of the year, he fighter of the year 2023. It don't even matter what nobody else do, bro. Like, like it don't even it don't even matter at that point. So it's good news from the WBA. I'm glad that they are right. going to um that they are going to order it. Um, and you know, man, we'll 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 see we'll see what happens if they stand firm on their word. They stood firm on Triple G, and, and um and, and he just and he just had to vacate both his belts, so he ain't even a champion no more. So yeah, um, yeah, elevated as the law. They stand firm on this one too, so we can get what we want as fight fans. And 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 I always tell them, OG, I I like to be right, but I like clarity too. I want to know because right now it's kind of gray. Like is Tank Duncan Devin? Is Devin Duncan Tank? Like we don't right. know. Right, right. If they order that goddamn fight, we'll know. Exactly. We'll know what's up real quick with, with who been bluffing and shit. And I want to find out so I can give them this smoke. Whoever deserves it, man. Um, but that's all I. That's all I got on it, man. Oh, um, well, you know, Ryan. You know, one thing about it, Ryan got said. You know, just, just, you know, just, just, just think about this. Now, let's just say he beat Javante Davis. He won't get a belt. You know, I mean, he get a pat on the back, and he gets some money, and that's it. And that's that's a, that's a strange thing. I'll be right it. back, OG. Yes, sir. All right, and that's the strange thing about it, Javante Davis. I mean, he would definitely, definitely, uh, 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 if he does win this fight, you know, hey, congratulations to him. See, one thing about it, this fight is big, people. This fight has sold out 30,000 seats. I mean, um, floor seats, okay? These floor seats are going for 31,000. I'm sorry, 31,000. It started out at 19. Then they elevated it up, baby. And they are buying it and they are buying it. And it sold out. Yes, it sold out. So average people like me and you, it's not for us. This for the elite. All right. These for guys that can afford 31,000 floor seats. All right. So they are. Damn, doing- what's $31,000? What you talking about, man? <laughs> they ain't for me. You talking baby. about some big money, man. Uh-uh. What, what we talking about? Uh-uh. I, I ask it's got to be pay per view. <laughs> Oh, you talking, you talking about the Tank and Ryan tickets? Yes, yes. Damn, man. Yeah, yeah, them hoes, them hoes expensive, man. It's the biggest, yes, it's the biggest fight in boxing so far this year, man. I mean, you oh, can't, yeah. you know, it's the only one that got a, a, a nationwide press conference tour that they did. And I thought the second press conference was way better than the than the first press conference. So they um they building it up. And, and, and speaking of that, since you was talking about the tickets. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, Hold go on. ahead. I, I, I would just mention that because, see, the thing about it is so funny about it. Just like what you said, everything you just said, all that is good, but it still ain't no belt up. <laughs> they not fight for anything. They not fight for nothing but money. <laughs> yeah, money and, and bragging rights and, and that stardom right. and shit. Cause, exactly. cause whoever whoever wins this hoe, they gonna be like you know Canelo Alvarez, Floyd Mayweather type of a sides over everybody. Like That's if right. you you gotta give them whatever they want when you when you fight whoever wins this fight. So That's it's right. It's, it's and be thirty one hundred, baby. That's right. Yes, sir. Thirty one thousand. Thirty one hundred or thirty one thousand. Thirty one hundred for flow seats ain't bad, but thirty one thousand. Thirty, no, thirty thousand. Damn. For floor seats, yes, sir. Fifteen hundred for nosebleed by the bathroom. Man, I wish I would, bro. <laughs> I, I, I wish I would. Shit, I'll be right in front of my TV, right in front of my big ad, big screen. Cause you gotta buy plane tickets. You gotta buy the hotel and shit. And then your, your lady ain't gonna want to just sit in the hotel and go to the fight and then come back. Shit, you got dinner, y'all gonna have to go to the casino and shit. Yeah, fuck around and spend a house. You, shit, you could have bought a house, man. The rich and famous, you could have put 20 30 percent on the house for that price, man. You got me. Devontae Davis say, My mama, I go have yeah. to pay. <laughs> yeah, damn, take, take, say he won't do bread, the man, bag, man, bag, baby. So, look, right. man. What's next? <laughs> all all ain't all ain't good with that fight while we talking about Tank and Ryan, man. And it's it's in the title, bro. I got I gotta talk to you about this rehydration clause, man. So Ooh. Ryan let the cat out the bag, man. He said, Look, 
you weight draining me you got me on a rehydration clause and for those y'all that don't know you should know by now they weighing in at 136 but the next day the day of the fight ryan cannot exceed 146 pounds he got to do a second weigh in where he can't weigh nothing but 146 pounds man what you what you think about the rehydration clause og talk to me i'm interested to hear your thoughts on this shit, man well you know i know that's your boy okay and, and, and I like Tank too. I think he's sensational. I think he has a great ring IQ. I think he got power. But right now, I think rehydration clauses, I don't believe in. I think it's a bunch of crap. I think that rehydration clause is just a insurance policy. Uh, that's how I look at it. Um, now, you got three choices, all right? It's Javante Davis being spiteful or because he's the A-side. Or is he being careful since he's the A side? Or is he not sure what kind of power Ryan has as the A side? One thing about it, weight classes are there for a reason. And so, and so is rehydration clauses. Now, you signed the contract, Ryan, though. You signed the contract and you know about the weight drain. You know about what you have to come and cannot wait over. So stop crying and stop crying and shut up and fight but of course when you're the a side you don't think about rehydration clauses when you're the a side you think about who's gonna walk first you're gonna think about the gloves you're gonna think about things like that not the uh uh uh, uh, uh um what size he's gonna be come um fight night because you weigh in the day before in 24 hours you can't put on that much weight I don't think you're going to sit there and eat up a big wall of melon and uh, eat up all this, this, and that, you know. But so this is why I'm saying you got to take a look at Ryan. I mean, uh, uh, um, Tank. You got to look at Tank. Is he that guy that he always talking about? He believes that he's the face of boxing, not yesterday, uh, not last year, but right now. So right now, I think that this rehydration clause is bad news. Right now, I think that Javante Davis shouldn't put the rehydration clause in there. I think he put it in there for a reason. Now, is he being spiteful or he's just trying to um, boast and say, hey, look, I can make you do what I want to do because I'm the A side? I don't know. But we'll know come April the 22nd. That's how I feel about it. I think the rehydration clause is unnecessary. I know the IBF does have that. But then it was mandated. That's why the IBF has that. Mm -hmm. It was mandated. But this wasn't mandated. This is what's now. And this shows you something. This shows you that Ryan Garcia wants this fight. Fact. This shows you that Ryan Garcia said, hey, look, okay, I do it. No problem. I do it. Everything that Tank thought Ryan Garcia wasn't going to say yes to, he did. He did what mm -hmm. Terrence Crawford would not do. He went in there and accepted everything, and he signed. And he, he signed. So, therefore, we got to fight on April 22nd, but that's how I feel. The rehydration clause should be scratched out of there. But, of course, the contract has been signed. Yeah, and and so you you asked a question that I want you to cook on because I know the answer to it, so I want to I get your thoughts on it. So you said, is he just trying to be spiteful because he's the A-side, or basically is he looking for an advantage? Well, they asked Tank about it, and Tank said she I'd make him come in at featherweight if I could. I, what y'all think? Am I stupid? I'm not going. He comes around at 160, 170 pounds. He's too big. I'm not fighting somebody that big. So he answered your question. He doing the shit because he looking for an advantage. He ain't doing the shit because he being spiteful. He ain't doing the shit because he doing it because he think Ryan too big. So does that change your change your thoughts in it? Because he didn't came out his own mouth and said, "Hey man, I'd get him to come to featherweight if I could," but. If we got the rehydration clause and the catch weight in there because he walk around 160, 170. Y'all want somebody to be stupid. I ain't stupid. I'm not fighting somebody that big. Well, what you think of that, man? Okay, well, that changed my mind a little bit because yeah. this is not the first time that happened. Floyd Mayweather tried to get him to fight bigger guys. And like he said, I'm not Superman. Now, quote, unquote, he said, I'm not Superman. Yes, Tank is a star. Yes, he put asses in his seats. Yes, Tank got that big power, brick hand. But he is human. 
He is human. And yes, Ryan is taller. Ryan is bigger. Now, keep in mind, Ryan is not that same Ryan that we used to see with that Burger King hat on and sitting there smiling and crying to Canelo in his arms. That's not the same Ryan no more. This Ryan has grown into his manhood. This Ryan has grown into his strength. And yes, this might change my mind a little bit because think about it. When Ryan is walking around, He's not mm-hmm. walking around at 140. He's not walking around at 145. He's walking around probably at 160. This is yep. how uh, uh, most fighters are. Now, of course, Earl Spence was doing the same thing, but he had self-control. He said, I'm going to start staying within 10 or 15 pounds of my weight. But now he can't do that because he's getting bigger. But anyway, um, still, uh, now that kind of changed my mind because you know, you know, will you use like a Tyson Fury? Your weight, your weight, it plays a big part. Now, of course, your weight can transition to your punches. Now, Ryan said he has a, 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 a knock, a, a left hook, and he can knock Devontae Davis out. Well, if you're coming in at 170, you might can. If you're coming in at 150, you might can. If you're coming in at 145, you might can. So, yes, that does change my mind. Uh, somewhere, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, look, Javante Davis is great. He is good, but you won't put him in there with a heavyweight. I mean, let's just use the basic common sense. So maybe he's using his common sense. So somebody probably told him, "Hey, look, think about it. Think about it, Tank. This is a big guy. He's already taller than you. Think about it when it come on fight night. Yes, sir. Think about it." And then next thing you know, Ryan is a big guy when you take off that robe. Mm-hmm. So next thing you know, Tank got his hands full. He's gonna have to slip punches and work harder for the win than he have to. So yes, that does make sense. I mean, so so for me, and this is something I've told y'all all before. Rehydration clauses have no spot, no no spot in the in the sport of boxing for me. I don't think they deserve any place. In the sport of boxing, I ain't like Floyd do it, Canelo, Oscar, whoever you want to throw at me. All them doing the shit is wrong, too, because you're negotiating something that can give you an advantage in the fight. When you weight drain somebody and they come in and they're not a full version of themselves, that could fuck up their punk punch resistance. It can make their stamina be messed up. Hell, it can mess up their punching power. So fighters should not be able to negotiate shit that can give them an advantage in the fight. If Ryan Garcia is too big for you, then you just shouldn't fight him, bro. If you're worried about him being too big after he weighs in and makes weight, then you shouldn't fight him. If he weighs in at 136 and makes weight, you should not be telling the man how much food and water or liquids or whatever he can eat or drink after that. That's not your place to do, bro. That's that's not your place to do because you could make the shit the fight the the fight is already dangerous as shit like it's already a dangerous ass game that they playing you can make it more dangerous by for somebody by putting them in a position to where they 60 40 50 percent of they self man you could li- you could literally do that shit and so I don't like it for that reason and I don't like it because it make you look weak if you tank bro like you supposed to like you supposed to be that dude man like like once he weigh in at 136 you should have enough faith enough skills enough power if you that guy to where it don't matter if he come in 150 or 155 hell you can rehydrate up too or do whatever you need to do too but trying to control how much the man weigh on the night of the fight bro i just ain't i ain't with that i don't i don't like that shit because it make you look weak it make you look like you're not confident man it make it make you look like you're not confident, bro. Like I'm not, I can't, I can't be on board with that shit. I can't rock with it. So, so if and I get the I get the notion where people tell me, oh gee, well Ryan signed to fight him. Well, yeah, because he wants to fight. So props to him for signing to fight him. But we shouldn't be even having this conversation because boxing should just get out of its own way and just make the shit right and make it to where fighters can't negotiate shit. They can they can affect the outcome of the fight. Like what if so? This is a big pay per view where they asking y'all to spend a hundred dollars or, or whatever on it. You spend your hundred dollars, you get to the day of the weigh in. Ryan face all sunken in. You can see every bone in his motherfucking body, right? Then you get to the night of the fight. He can't rehydrate up, so he get in there and you could tell he don't look like himself. His hands ain't fast. He's slower than usual. He ain't got no punch resistance, and then Tank going there and knock his ass out in the in the first round or the second round. You gonna be happy you spent your money on that shit? 
Man. All because the fighter was weight drained and you didn't get to see them fight at their best. I'm I want to see people fight at their best, bro. And weight draining somebody, or we're gonna talk about this in a little bit. Did you see how small the ring was in the Tim Zoo and Tony Harrison fight? Did you see how little the ring was? All because Tim Zoo was a pressure fighter with no feet in the A side. You saw how Tony Harrison mm -hmm. took one step back and he was already on the ropes. Yes, sir. See how that shit worked? Like yeah. all because what Tim Zoo was the motherfucking A side. So let me negotiate some shit that can make the fight very easy for me. Let me negotiate some yeah. shit that can make the that can make the fight in my favor. Y'all cool with A sides being able to do that shit? Cause I'm not. On no way, shape, or form. A lot of people didn't notice that shit, though. I'm looking at the fight. I'm watching mm -hmm. OG Collins. I'm like, damn, all Tony did was take a step and a half back, and his back is and against the ropes. Right. But you know why he was able to do that? Because I'm Tim Zoo. I'm the A-side. So, shit, we're going to negotiate this ring size where your ass can't move around the ring. You longer. Mm -hmm. You got the better jab, right? You got the better feet. But let's take your feet away. Let's take your jab away by me negotiating in the contract that you got to fight me in the size of a ring that we spar in and shit. That's right. But 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 but, but we supposed to be cool with people being able to do that shit, right? Yep. The rehydration clause is the same goddamn thing, y'all. It's the same motherfucking thing, bro. You're negotiating some shit that Ryan could go in there and get his damn block knocked off. And if you tank and if you negotiate that shit and you lose, if this man under a rehydration clause and he beats you. Oh, bro, you opening yourself up to to a whole different animal, bro. So I'm not I'm not with that shit. And anybody that's okay with it, you need. I suggest you 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 study what a rehydration clause and somebody being weight drained can do to you. Because Ryan Garcia, let's say he all the way in shape, and he 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 working his ass off. He all the way in shape, and once he get in shape, his natural walk around weight all the way in shape. No body fat. Let's say it's like 155 pounds, bro. Mm -hmm. And if it's 155 pounds and he got a cut to 136, but they only let him get up to 146, do you understand what that nine pounds between 155 and 146? Do you understand what that shit can do to you being yeah. weight trained and shit, bro? Like that's yeah. a lot. That's a lot, dog. So that's you right. Know, mm -hmm. You know, if y'all if y'all cool with it, bro, then just know that you you doing yourself a disservice because you could be messing up the product that you're getting by being okay with that shit. And just cause, and just uh, just cause something happened all the time, don't mean that it's right. And I see people where he shouldn't sign it. Just don't take the fight. Then, no, nah, bro, just don't be. We shouldn't let people negotiate that shit. It go both ways, bro. Why it's fight? Like I don't understand this old way of thinking that some of y'all have, and it's it's crazy to me. Like as fight fans, shouldn't we just be like, nah, bro, the shit should be fair. Like we we want to we want a good fight. We want the shit to be on the even playing field. Not just, hey, man, shit, just don't take the fight. Somebody else will. Nah, bro, that shit bad for boxing, dog. If you a fan of the sport, you don't want people weight drained and negotiating gloves and negotiating the size of the ring and all this extra shit. Bro, that shit, that makes no sense, bro. It makes no sense for that shit to be in the sport. So I hate the shit. I don't like it. I think Tank could beat him without it. You know what I mean? And I want to see Tank challenge himself. And not look for every advantage just because that's the way that boxing has always been, bro. And that's my thoughts on it, man. Yes, sir. I'm going to follow up on that right after this. Uh, shout out to Mattel UL and that uh, Super Chat. I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. I don't see any Super Chats on um, Sundays with my partner here. Okay, we got Foxy Brown. She's in the Super Chat. I appreciate you. And she said, Ryan can just pay the fine like Canelo did. Danny Jacobs. Yeah, he could do that. He could pay the yeah. fine, you know. So how much is the fine, you know? Um, but still in all, uh, um, you know what? How much the fine is? No, nah, I don't know. I don't okay. know, but I know Tank okay. ain't doing it for that because Tank himself said he he doing it because he don't want him to be too big. So right. forget the fine or whatever. And um, just real quick to, to Lewis Hinton, look, bro, Mm. All this stay on code shit. My code is to tell you what I really think and tell you what I believe the truth to be. My my code is is me as a man saying what's on my mind, bro. So all this staying on code and all, bro, I don't. I'm I, there is no code. I don't follow a narrative. I don't follow other men, bro. Like I don't. Exactly. I don't do that. Like right. I stay on code with what the hell I think and and give right. you my opinion. You know what I'm talking right. about? So it is what it is, bro. Yes, sir. Ain't no code. Uh, uh, yes, the rain was small. Even Jamel Charlton said, look, Tony Harrison didn't move like he used to move, you know, and that was the reason for it. It was a smaller rain. So he had to step back, 
go forward, go backwards, go forward. He couldn't pop that stick and move on the back foot like he always do. But see, that's the advantage of an A-side. That's the advantage of the hometown guy. Now, uh, I just want to get back in touch on this rehydration clause. Yeah, go uh, ahead. I, I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying because uh, um, I do agree with, hey, listen, you, you want to fight uh, uh, Ryan? Uh, um, you gave him the stipulation, you agreed to everything. Uh, 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 but if you are a fighter, if you say you are the best at the lightweight division, matter of fact, you say Canelo's on his way out. You say, I am the face of boxing right now because Brian Custer asked him, listen, how about the winner of this fight? Do you think the winner of this fight will be the face of boxing and the best in the boxing hmm. right now? And he said, hey, I am already. Well, if you are, then you shouldn't mind fighting uh, 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 no matter what weight he in. Now, we'll come fight night, make sure he make the weight. Then after that, you don't have anything to do with what he eat. You don't have anything to do with once he come into that ring. Now, now I do agree with that, uh, uh, but I still think, you know, maybe he just, like, ain't that face of boxing. He wants to be. He gave he got the perception for Mayweather did a great job. He's kind of like what they did to uh, 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 Ryan and Canelo. All right. Mm -hmm. now, of course, he did not beat top top level guys. Let's be honest. But now Ryan came into his own. Ryan now wants to fight him. Ryan is accepting everything he's throwing at him. And now I'm still thinking that okay. You know, maybe he's worried that, okay, maybe, just maybe, he hit me with a lucky shot. I don't see it coming. But then again, like I say, if you are the face, if you that good, if you that good like you say you are, prove it. Yeah, prove and, and, and my thing is, as a Tank Davis fan, a huge one at that, you giving people a legitimate excuse as to why, you, so you taking credit from yourself. So if you go in there and knock Ryan out, you know he got a lot of haters. What they gonna say? Oh man, shit, you you made you made him. He was weight drained. Even if he ain't, even if Ryan looks strong, even if he look good and 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 he look fit and he himself, people gonna be like, "Hey man, shit, you weight drained him and shit. You weight drained him like that's why you knocked him out. You ain't you people you taking credit away from yourself." People are already gonna, like you don't give them anything legitimate to say about you, bro. Like, like, and that shit would be a legitimate critique. Cause shit, I'm a huge fan, and I got the critique because I I know what the shit can do to you. Maybe a lot of people yeah. don't know what shit like what being weight drained in a fight can do to you. But right. bro, it, it fucks up so much shit. Your weight, like your punch resistance to your head and your body could be off. You could be sluggish. Your stamina could be gone. I just hope that Ryan still is in shape. You know what I'm saying? I hope that he's still able. To just be a good version of himself so we can get a great fight. Of course, I'm rooting for Tank because that's who I'm a fan of. But I want to see a good fight, bro. I, I want to see the fight be competitive and be damn exactly. good, bro. And, and shit like exactly. that could take away from it. I just hope that it doesn't. But I'm not going to sit up here. And it's crazy, right? The same people that was telling me about like like they don't they don't want to admit this, OG. But it's the same shit that Conor Ben was trying to do to Chris Eubanks Jr., of course, yes. it's the same shit. But but when I'm when I'm when I'm cooking, and that's the thing be killing me about some of y'all fight fans, bro. When I'm cooking Conor Ben for it, and I'm saying Conor Ben, yo, that's some bullshit. Why you doing Chris Eubanks like that? That's some cheating ass shit. You rehydrate, you, you catch weighting them, then you rehydrating them and shit, and, and you got a clause in here. Everybody was with me. Everybody was rocking with old knockout. Right. But when I keep the same energy and I say the exact same shit about Tank Davis. Now I gotta stay on code and shit. Maybe I don't get out of my face. <laughs> What's up, big dog? dog? <laughs> I know cold. I mean cold. I mean people tell me, man, I follow the cold. What cold? <laughs> what bro? What cold? Oh, you mean you, 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 you mean the cold? You you mean the cold <laughs> where when I was cooking Connor Ben and shit, you was with it. Yeah, that's real. That's one hundred percent Connor Ben. He, he can't be doing that shit. He a fraud. He this. He that. All that shit, bro. Man. But then, but then, but now that it's Tank Davis, oh no, no, guy, you know what I'm saying? A side, man, A side advantages and shit, man. A side, bro. A side. <laughs> Get out of here, dog. Let's do with that shit, man. What's up, Big <laughs> Dog Willie? What's going on, Big Dog Willie? Con, the GOAT, the winning team, baby. He said, Con is a better trainer than Eddie Fulch. 
Facts. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, man. What up? Yeah, Amir Khan is the man, bro. He the man. I uh, we got we got some we got some bullshit, man. We okay. we, we got some we got we got oh, some bullshit, no. David. Oh, David. No. Been a, Oh what 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 man? Oh, oh, oh okay, I thought it was some bullshit. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, hey man, David Benavidez and Caleb Plant. Did you see the damn uh all access they had, bro? Yes, sir, I did. It, it, yeah, man. Woo, man. Uh, what yes, you saying that? Over, man? over 150 people here, man. Let's hit the like button for the saying OG and my man Ko Knockout Boss 86. All right, show us some love. All right, hit the like button, please. All right, yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, did you I, I watched it? We we'll talk about it, not me. I watched that fight. Diego Pacheco put on a hell of a performance. But um David Benavidez and um and, and Caleb Plant, man, they had their all access, man. Did you watch that shit? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Man, what'd you mm -hmm. what'd you think of that? I thought that shit was lit, man. It was they had me. I'm ready for the fight. They're fighting like what two weeks, man. I'm I'm yes. excited, man. What, yes. you, what you got on the all access this weekend, man? Man, I think all access. They did a great job. Okay. They got into their personal life. They got into them outside the ring. They went back in history. They showed David Benavides as that fat little kid he used to be. Then they showed him, and he looked so different. And they showed how he kind of much uh, lost that hundred and something pounds and showed him how he was a beast. They showed how Jose Benavides junior how he was just a big star at one point of time in arizona he went and through the amateur ranks like with full nothing but medals you know mm -hmm. but of course like i told everyone you can't transition sometimes from the amateurs to the pros all right but then again uh, uh they did a great job with david benavides and his family his uh, wife and his son and his father they showed how young his father was. His father used to box. I mean, they did a great job by getting in their head, getting inside their home. I, th I think they did a great job. I think they showed uh, David Benavides uh, enjoying the fruit of his labor. I mean, driving the Lamborghini. I mean, I, I, I like it. It was fire. I mean, then they went on the other side with Kellen Plant. They showed and he told how he grew up in the streets, how he grew up in a trailer park, how he grew up and had to sleep in abandoned buildings, you know, how he got put out, how they got put out, you know, and now his father, now his father is sitting at the table with him, his wife, Jordan Hardy slash plant and his son, Charlie. Yes, sir. I remember that name, Charlie, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, but still. That was fire. That shows you that both guys don't like each other. Both guys, uh, uh, Kellen Plant believes that he's at a different level, you know. So I mean that that shows you that this fight is going to be amped up more and more, especially after SS Part Two. Now they have a Part Two coming up. Now, of course, I like how they um, pretty much show the sparring. Uh, uh, how David uh, Benavid is punching. I mean, he punched with main authority, no doubt. He was lean. David Benavid is looking lean and mean out there, man. He said, yeah. I ain't fat boy no more, man. He looking, that, he looking in man. shape, man. Yes, he was in shape, no doubt about that. He was in shape. Now, Kellen Plant, personal cook. He has a personal cook. My personal cook has been there ever since uh, uh, he had that loss. Uh, with uh, Canelo Alvarez, yeah, I think yeah, before yeah. that also, you know. So, but it showed the human side. That's what I like. It showed the human side. They showed Callum Plant and Jordan going on date night. They showed how he went and he still go to the Low Riders. Mm -hmm. All right, the Low Riders is a club he used to be in with the old school. You know, the cars that hop up and down. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. They went to that shit. That shit was fire. Right. Yeah. yeah, he's part of that community. He's part of that community, and that's what he used to do, you know. So, uh, 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 and one thing that caught my attention, one thing that stuck in my head. Now, I'm not Kellen Plant. I'm not uh, 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 um, Earl Spence. I'm not Terrence Crawford. I don't have millions. But one thing Kellen Plant said, and it stuck with me. He said, I've been poor. I've been poor, dirt poor. And now 
I have money. And one thing about it, you never want to go back being poor. Yeah, so, you don't want to be broke, get money, then be broke again. That shit that's hurts. Right. That, that, that hurts. You know, <laughs> and, and, and that what he said he was scared of. He said that bothered him with that uh, uh, fight with Canelo Everett. So he mm -hmm. put that energy. He put that energy into making a Kellen Plant action figure. And that is making money for him. That's making generational wealth. So, I mean, I don't blame him, but that's stuck in my head. That's stuck in my head, and that is only human. And so I like the way they show that human side. That's mm -hmm. what I like. David Benavides, they showed his human side. Yes, he said, I lost two belts, but I never been stopped. I yeah, never lost I, mean, fight. I lost them, but I'm still undefeated. Yeah, yeah. Right. He said, I ain't you know, never right. lose a fight, though. Yeah. yeah. Talk your but, shit, David. You know, but this is what I'm talking about. The human side. The human side. When you get a little money, like you said, and these are facts. When you get a little money, you go to parties. You go to parties and people offer you this. People offer you that. People push this in front of you. And you say, oh, okay, what the hell, right? And you take a couple of hits and this and that. But now your livelihood, your livelihood been stripped. Your livelihood been stripped. And that's what the lesson he learned. Like he said, I'm glad it happened then, then now. That's all I got. Man, I thought it was, I, I agree with everything you said. I thought it was phenomenal. But my biggest takeaway, because I ain't going to repeat everything OG just said, man, this fight, bro, I don't remember a fight with this much bad blood. Like, they like they Ooh. really don't like each other. Like, Ooh. this shit ain't fake. And them make for the best buildups. And they can make for the, the, the most, and y'all going to be crazy. Y'all going to think I'm crazy. They could also make for the most one-sided fight. Like, people thinking how competitive it's going to be. I think with all the talking, all the emotion, somebody is not somebody is gonna put on a demo. Like either Plant is about to outbox the shit out of Benavidez and just make him look silly, or Benavidez is about to beat his ass, bro. He about to beat him up. One of them two things about to happen, and that's why I'm so excited. Cause when you got that much bad blood, bro, and y'all don't like each other, and y'all going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's going to something, something going to get tipped one side or the other, bro. Like some, something about to happen. Either David is about to get outboxed. He's going to look slow. He's going to be reaching and lunging and plant just going to be boxing on him, rolling on him, doing them dirty. Or Benavide about to beat his ass up, man. <laughs> like, like it's one of the, it's one of them two things about to happen, bro. Like, cause the animosity is real. It's like when you finally, it's like when you, you've been wanting to, you finally get to put your hands on something like after mm -hmm. all that build up, all the adrenaline, the emotion and shit. Mm -hmm. All that shit, bro. It, it, it's shit on the line, bro. Like you, like first of all, Dave Benavidez, Caleb Plant making money off your name, bro. Yeah, like his merch. <laughs> like, like y'all understand how disrespectful that is. Like, oh, that was cold. <laughs> like, bro, if I go get me, if I go make some t-shirts right now. And I put the singing OG on them hoes. Or I put a wow, wow, wow. Or I got KQ Casey. And I start making money off of KQ. Now, do you know how disrespectful that is? This man, listen, if you want to buy Kayla Plant shit, you got to go buy, you got to go to davidbenavidez.com to buy Kayla Plant shit. Like, that is some of the most disrespectful shit that I think I've ever seen in boxing, bro. Like, Forget all the slaps and Mayorga smoking a cigarette and Sugar Shane face. And I forget all that, bro. That's this is so the first bad. time that I've ever seen a boxer use another boxer name to make money. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first, like, I've been watching boxing a long time. I'm going to repeat that shit. This is, the first time, <laughs> this is the first time I've ever seen a boxer use another boxer name to make money. <laughs> and, that, and, and, and the crazy thing is you're doing that shit and you gotta fight that man. Come on, dog. <laughs> Come on, dog. And then if you date me to be there, bro, this man, this, this man then said all this shit about your daddy. He making money off your name. Man, you gotta stand like you gotta go beat his ass. And if you Kayla Plant, bro, you can't have Dave Benavidez.com be selling your merch and shit. <laughs> man, then, then let him beat your ass too. Somebody about to get that. What I'm telling y'all is, bro. A lot of people like, oh, this fight close. If 50 50. 
Is this is that I'm telling y'all somebody either Caleb, some the balls. <laughs> either Caleb Plant is about to put down the best performance of his career, <laughs> or Dave Benavidez is about to put down the best performance of his career. Somebody Man. getting getting their ass whooped Man. on on March the 25th, bro. And that's all I got on it, man. Man, that's all I got on next year. I'm, I'm excited for it, man. That takes some balls, man, to do that. But now, on a serious note, now, but one thing about it, David Benavides, we have seen this time and time again. I have said this on my live stream. David Benavides, David Benavides is so amped up that he is starting to let Kellen Plant get in his head, if he's not in there already. They ran into each other outside, as you saw mm -hmm. on all SS. And David Benavides went right at him. The bread man had to jump in and say, hey, look here, Jose. You know me and you never had no problems, all right? Why are you doing all that? Why are you doing all that? Good morning, Miss Knockout. Hey, right? sweetie, what's you know, up, baby? I mean, what's up? you know, he was like, hey, you don't have to do all that. And Kellen Plant looked. He had his hands in his pocket. And this is what. This is what really would set me off, knockout. All right. Oh, okay. You know this guy is really pissing you off, right? And he's so condescending, right? He put his hand in the pocket. Yeah, that that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Caleb well, Plant is like, he he a you condescending, mad. he a yeah. condescending, sarcastic asshole, man. That's, and it's so mad. yeah, you mad. <laughs> you mad, right? Like, bro, Caleb Plant. Oh. Caleb Plant Ooh. probably the most sarcastic, and a lot of people don't catch his shit. He probably the best shit talker in boxing. Y'all just don't know it because yeah. he's so and, and like and you wonder, like you know how you know he the best shit talker in boxing. He pissed everybody off, bro. Like, like it's the it's the way that he the way that he do it, bro. He's so he's so he's so nonchalant, so sarcastic with the shit. He pissed off Canelo. He pissed off Darrell. And now he done pissed off Dave Benavidez, bro. <laughs> he done pissed off everybody. Dave Benavidez tried to fight him like four times that day. He tried to fight him at the hotel. He tried to fight him at the press conference. He tried to fight him after the press conference. He got, bro, Dave Benavidez is the definition of on site with Caleb Plant right now. He want to put his hands on him so bad, bro. I can't yeah. wait, man. Yeah, he I can't it. wait. I can't wait to see that shit, man. But the all access was great. If you haven't watched it and you're looking for something to watch for a good 30 minutes, Go watch that shit today, man. That shit was exciting. Uh, let's keep it. Let, let's keep it going, though, man. Uh, yeah, Basil. Yeah, Basil. I've been thinking about that. About What's ten that? people mentioned that. Wow, wow, wow. T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do that. You yeah. gotta do. Don't nobody go steal his ideas, man. Don't nobody yeah. go do that shit, man. Don't do it. Don't do a Caleb Plant to the OG, man. <laughs> Come looking for you. Don't do. Don't do the OG like Caleb Plant, bro. Got. I go to yeah, kqkcboxingnetwork.com and it's somebody else and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do that shit, man. Uh, look, man. Um, before we get to the main fight, man. Former Olympian gold medalist Tony Yoker lost to Carlos to come over the weekend, bro. He's mm -hmm. trained by Virgil Hunter. Virgil Hunter been taking a lot of L's, man. He's been taking a lot of L. Barrios lost. Tony Yoka just lost. And he had somebody else that he used to train with that he don't train with no more. I forgot. I think, yeah, Barrios left him. Didn't Barrios just fight somebody? Yeah, yeah. Barrios, yeah, got Bar Barrios yeah. left Virgil Hunter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Yoka has now suffered two losses in a row up under Virgil Hunter. Virgil mm -hmm. Hunter down bad right now, man. Tony Yoka losing to a 42 year old journeyman, man. Mm -hmm. Man, what you got on there, bro? That's that's bad, bro. Yeah, I I, I didn't I didn't see the whole fight, but uh to come is like you say, he's a journeyman, and you know, he wins some, he loses some, but he is a big, stocky heavyweight. Now, as far as fundamentals go, he doesn't really have any. He has that what we call I call a crossover guard like Joe Frazier. He crossed over like that, but he can take a licking and keep on ticking. And he can throw and he can throw with mean intentions. And he was landing. He was landing on, on, on Yoka. And Yoka pretty much in the South Paul stands is pretty much trying to land that left hand. But you know, when you start getting confused, when you start getting overwhelmed, then you start throwing things that you normally don't throw, you know. So, you know, uh, um, basically, you know, I don't have a lot because I came in at the tail end. But what I did see is the decision. Now, when I came in, of course, uh, 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 the calm, uh, he was he was overwhelming Yoka. Uh, Yoka, you know, was looked like he was beat up. Now, a couple more rounds, I think he would have been out of there. 
Uh, but the judges still try to rob him at the end. Yeah, you know, yeah, they did that shit you know, when he yeah. got his ass whipped by Bacoli. They keep doing that shit for him because he a gold okay. medalist and shit. I said they tried to do that shit for um for um Yoka in his last fight that he had against Bacoli. They had some mm -hmm. close ass decision when Bacoli beat his ass the whole fight, bro. Yes, they keep trying to do that shit for Yoka. Keep trying to save him. He just ain't it, bro. But go ahead, OG. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but so like I say, you know, uh, um. To come, like I say, he's over 40 years of age, you know, and he's still boxing. Uh, and he's still having fun with what he does, and he's winning. He's winning, you know. So, I mean, he's keep going, and they keep, keep answering the phone and taking the call. Why not? You know, but like I say, sooner or later, uh, uh, it's time, you know, sometime to hang it up, you know. Yeah. But uh, that's all I have on that because, like I say, I didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, but I ain't got a whole lot on it either. Um. Tony Yoka lost before he came into that fight because his mind was gone. You could tell he ain't the same dude he was before Bacoli. Bacoli, sometimes, man, and we say it all the time, taking an ass whooping and, and the wrong type of ass whooping could change a fighter forever. And it looked like he was still, Tony Yoka was unsure of himself from the opening bell. And um, he was the bigger man, the longer man, had an eight inch arm reach advantage, six foot seven. He outweighed Tony Yoka. I mean, he outweighed Carlos to come. Carlos to come is 42 years old. And Tony Yoko was supposed to go in there and do what he did to him, but he, he gone mentally, man. He gone mentally. Like, he ain't got no confidence no more. They didn't do a good job of building him back up. And Carlos Tacom just went in there and outworked him, and Tony Yoko was in his high guard, shelling up. Looked like he was kind of scared and, and second-guessing himself the whole fight, and he ended up losing, man, and just fighting to survive. So, um, you know, he's going to probably go down as one of the more disappointing Olympic gold medalists that we've had in recent memory, man. This is a dude... That beat Joe Joyce in the amateurs. This is a dude that wow. won go like won the gold medal and all that shit, man. Mm -hmm. Um, it is what it is, bro. He 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 just he didn't look good last night. But that's all I got on it, man. From from that perspective, man, we got to get to the um get to the fight. You know what I mean? Get to the, the Tony Harrison joint. You want to read that? Oh yeah. Uh, this, uh, L Doug. He said, "What's good, KQ? Who told you that David Murray? I just I didn't ask Ron. I asked somebody else." And they said no, but I didn't want to bother Ronnie with that because he's too busy right now. He got a rotation going, so uh, um, so I don't know if he's on there. I don't know, so I could be wrong. So um, yeah, yeah. So I hope um, so. They need to announce that undercard shit, they right? Need to know who on that mug? Because I know they're gonna want a hundred dollars. Don't give me Tank and Ryan, and then give me a bunch of bullshit. Do what you did for the Tank Hector fight, man. See, give see some Ryan, names. See Ronnie Shell, um, like he told me next time we talk and interview it had to be at night and he has a rotation morel comes in for two hours two and a half hours then jamal comes in he's back in the gym of course all right kid austin comes in you know so he has a rotation like that now whoever's up to fight he keep him longer so he's kind of busy now during the day so i don't i try not to bother him uh um but i do shoot the you know you no, know, uh, uh, call him, you know, just to talk, not about boxing, but just talk about Houston and my daughter coming down there and things like that, L Dub. So, um, I didn't ask him about that, you know, so I might maybe I'll call him next week, but um, no, I didn't. But I did ask someone that's close to the camp, and they said they're not for sure, I believe not. So that's why I said, no, nah, I don't think so. Mm. so well, yeah. shit. hey yeah, man, he's been, oh, he's on there. I'm with the real is on there. Yeah, if he on, if he on there, I'm lit. Let me okay. tell y'all that right. right now. Give me some more names. Uh, all me, right. That's a good one. That's that's a good one right there. But I need more. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? That's a good mm -hmm. one. But I need more. But um, but look, man, Tony Harrison versus Tim Zoo, man. Tony went to the outback and shit, man. Went to Australia. People thought he was gonna go and conquer and come back, and we gonna get Charlo versus Harrison three. Tim Zoo had other plans, man. What you what you got on that fight? Tim Zoo, Tony Harrison. 154 pound WBO interim title was on the line, and Tim Zoo did his thing, got the stoppage in the ninth round. What you what you got on that fight, man? Well, I told everyone the quiet ones are the ones you need to watch out for. The ones that's not going to be bold, not the one that that that's going to sit there and and, and, and and say this or say that. You know, uh, uh, Tim Zoo kept his composure. He didn't talk a lot of uh, 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 ish. He went in there and he did what he had to do. He knew his game plan and he he executed just like he wanted to. 
Now, of course, he fights the same style because, as Jamel said, he did everything that we trained for him before the injury. But Tony Harris, he lingered on the ropes. Now, I still right now don't understand why did you sit on the ropes ever since the round two all the way up to round nine. Why did you linger on the rope? Now, he went back and forth, back and forth. He slid down there, popping the stick. Now, he worked his jab great. He has a 76-inch reach. Now, he was working the jab. But, of course, Tim Zhu showed him that he wasn't intimidated. He came with the high guard and walked him down step by step and inch by inch. And he put him against the ropes. And then that's when Tim Zhu tried to hook not throw a jab. He hooked the left jab, and then he was scoring. Now, Tony Harrison trying to slip the punches. Now, he went down small and came up tall and got caught. That's what happened. He got caught with a left and a right. Now, Tim Zhu was thrown with mean intentions all night. Now, Tim Zhu, listen, he don't look like that. He's that guy, but he was that guy last night. Now, Tim Zhu did uh, pretty much score a left and a right, and then when he got up close, he tried to use an uppercut. And then from a distance, from mid-range, he went and banged the body. He banged the left and right liver. Now, Tony Harrison, I told everybody, I see him in the fourth round breathing out his mouth. All right? I saw him breathing out his mouth, and that is a bad sign, especially for Tony Harrison. That is a very bad sign. So, therefore, uh, uh, I seen Tony, Tony Harrison slowing down, but he had a little burst for a minute when he came and started using that left and right hand. First of all, Tony looked like Adrian Bronin. He did not let his hands go last night. That's the problem I had. Why was he not throwing punches? Why did not keep the fight in the middle? That's the mistakes that he made. You need to keep that fight in the center of the ring because Tony Harrison can box. He can box. But sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, 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 when you have a tragedy, and I'm not using this excuse, but when you lose your father slash trainer and when you don't have anybody else now but your brother, you know, that kind of kind of takes you away from what you used to be, you know, because you don't take it seriously, just like the Russell brothers. You think they're going to take Gary Russell, Mr. Gary Russell seriously than he did had their father? No. No, that's their brother that they used to fight all the time in the room and stuff, right? No, they're going to respect their father more than their brother. So you're going to see that in the ring. But now, uh, of course, uh, uh, um. Tony Harrison, you know, we were expecting more from him. We were expecting him to box more. Uh, we were expecting him to use his uh, uh, right hand more. Now, he was holding the phone, but he was holding it too low. He was dropping that left hand. He was throwing the left hand from the knee, the jab from the knee, which I don't like. I think a jab should be thrown up here, but it wasn't. So, Tony Harrison made the biggest, biggest mistake. He let Tim Zhu what Tim Zhu is very good at, linger on the ropes. He let uh, Tim Zhu come in on him while he on the ropes. And then that's when Tim Zhu teed off on him. Tim, Tim Zhu, he did everything right last night, just about everything right. Uh, he did miss a lot of shots. But Tony got hit too much in that fight for me. And I knew that it was just a matter of time before he started scoring on top of that head. Why? Because Tony kept putting the head down. Keep trying to move. Keep trying to move. Keep trying to move. And he timed him. He timed him and he scored. He scored as he timed him. Now, yes, that jab was working, but you cannot fight a whole fight with your jab. You're going to have to use that right hand. And he only used it. Matter of fact, I don't even think his punch output was that big you know i don't know i didn't look at it no nah, it wasn't she at the end of the fight tim zoo landed more power punches than he threw wow see yeah. see 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 he, cause tim zoo landed like they said he landed like 98 power punches and tony harrison threw 88 wow man 
Okay. Now, Tony Harrison is a veteran. Now, this is another thing, and I'm uh, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna end with this. Tony Harrison is a veteran. You know how to survive, Tony. You know when you get in trouble, what to do. You know how to clinch. You know how to hold. You know how to jump out and hold on and don't let them go to the referee breaks you up. You know, he know how to do these things, but he did not. Now, was it because he's in a different country? Uh, or is it Tim Zhu was a uh, 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 younger, fresher? Or did Tim Zhu punches hurt? I don't know. But one thing I do know is that uh, 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 Tony Harrison got rocked not once, but three times. So Tim Zhu got something. He got something in in that hand. But see, one thing about it, Tim Zhu, I mean, uh, Tony Harrison is not a Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo has gotten better. He has gotten better and better. He has gotten better since him and Tony Harrison fought. Now, right now, if Tim Zhu fought Castano, Tim Zhu will lose. Tim Zhu will lose if he fought a Castano. Now, of course, I think Jamel has gotten better, better, and better in each fight. Now, of course, as you saw last night, it's like his hand is healing great. No splint, no cast, no anything. Now, I don't know if he punching the bag or not. I don't know. I haven't talked to Ronnie at all. So, But still, in all, I will say this, that uh, um, Tim Zeus deserved to win last night. He earned it. He was the better man. And, and I ain't mad at that. Now, Tony Harrison might have to make some decisions because now he is 29 and 4 with 15 KOs. Tim Zhu now is 22 and 0. He's still undefeated. 22 and 0 with 16 by way of knockout. Yes, sir. So, so right now, I mean, I tip my hat off at Tim Zhu. And he will be coming here. I think they said the fight gonna be set up for this summer. So I mean, I can't wait. Showtime doing it again, baby. Yes, sir. We're gonna get that this summer. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, look, bro. I I like Tony Harrison. I like how he talk. I like his boxing skills. But I told y'all at the highest level of boxing, the last things you need to have that are questionable is your gas tank and your chin. And Tony came out jabbing well in the first round, looked good in the second round. Yeah. By the middle of the third round, his mouth was open, bro. Like, by the middle of the third round, fourth round, he was already breathing out his mouth, man. And they had the ring smile on him, and Tim Zoo just kept putting that pressure on him, kept putting that pressure on him, breaking him down, going to the body a little bit, landing good counter shots. You cannot, you cannot fight at the level Tony Harrison is trying to fight at and not be able to last, bro. You got to be in 15-round, 20-round shape so you can make sure you can do what you need to do for 12 rounds. And you damn sure can't not have a chin, okay? Mm-hmm. When that happens to you, it's only a matter of time at the level that he's fighting at. And Tim Zhu is a patient pressure fighter. They got good awkward timing, and he can counter punch a little bit. And he just mm-hmm. kept walking through Tony. And since Tony wasn't throwing no damn power punches, Tim Zhu was like, shit, I don't respect none you throwing at me. Your little jab, I eat that shit because you ain't doing nothing but jabbing. I'm throwing hooks and uppercuts, and I'm going at your ass, bro. I'm coming to get you. And he went and he walked him down, bro. And I be damned. I told you. I said, man, Tony, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because his chin's so high. I don't know if it's because he's so long, but he cannot see uppercuts coming. For some reason, everybody catches ass with uppercuts. Wow. Sergio Garcia, he outboxed him, but go watch the fight. Sergio Garcia was catching his ass with uppercuts. Jamel Charlo knocked him out with like three, four uppercuts straight. And mm-hmm. what did Tim Zoo just do? <laughs> Tim Zoo in that ninth round threw like three, four, five uppercuts and just wow. had Tony Harrison head going like this. And yeah. he finally turned it against the ropes and ended up getting caught and, 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 and went down. But he, for me, man, he had a good career. But where, where do you go from here? Because if you can't keep Tim Zoo off of you, you're gonna get the 160 and keep them boys up off of you. You know what I'm saying? Can you be like like are you gonna become a journeyman for these dudes coming up from 147 to 154? What do you want to become? Because there'll still be fights for you. But now if you Tony Harrison with four losses being knocked out four times, they're gonna start being like, Hey, bro, Earl Spence needs to tune up for his first fight at 154. You busy? <laughs> That's what they're gonna start doing to your ass, man. If you stick around too long, hey man, Virgil Ortiz, he's just moving up from 154. 
he going he, he coming to 154 he need a good boxer on his resume man you you busy tony can we can we get you in there like like you about to go to gatekeeper now man so you got to decide mm-hmm. if you tony harrison is a former world champion the only got to be jamel charlo you mm-hmm. have to decide whether you okay with being a journeyman if you okay with being a journeyman man, get your bread bro yeah. get your bread just you know just understand mm-hmm. what could happen after boxing you could be punch drunk you cannot right. be able to talk you can have issues or whatever but get your bread if that's what you want to yep. do Mm-hmm. But that's what that's what you're gonna be. My brother Jay Grant think Tony got something left. I'm telling y'all, bro, he has no chin and his con like you don't get you don't have conditioning issues in your 20s and then get to your mid-30s and they go away. It's only gonna get worse from here. <laughs> it's only gonna get worse from here. If you was getting gassed in fights in your 20s and 30s, I mean your your 20s, mm-hmm. when you get to your 30s, the older that you get, you just gonna gas out quicker. The man was sucking wind by the fourth round, bro. Yeah, he was sucking wind by the fourth round, but he fought valiantly. He tried his best. Tim Zoo was just younger, stronger, <laughs> hungrier, and uh-huh. he he did what he did to Tony, man. And I told y'all it would happen, bro. You can't trust a man with no gas tank and no chin, man. Uh-huh. You can't do it. You're gonna end up, you're gonna be mad, man. You're gonna be mad at yourself, you're gonna be mad at him if you put money on him. Mm-hmm. And and it is what it is, but that's all I got on it, man. That, that's all that's all I got on Tony. I wish him the best. I hope that he you know, bounces back and does well, man. You got um, you got now Tim Zoo and Jamel Charlo. That's the other thing. Tim Zoo said, "Say my name." He said, "I'm coming for Charlo." Right. He said, "Say my name." Say my name man. He said, "Damn, you know, my name." Smoke, you what know. you um, what, what you got on? What you got on on old Tim Zoo, man? He, he coming at man. your boy, man. Man, listen. At your boy, bro. Uh, uh, he said he's he's a main guy. He's a main fighter. Tony and nice, and you know, but. He just an angry. He just an angry man. No, he's confident. It's a difference. Jamel is confident. Now, of course, like Jamel said last night. Okay, I I, re, I watched the replay. Uh, cause you know when I call fights, I really can't enjoy it like I want to. But um, Jamel said, "Listen, I'm not Tony Harrison. I'm not Tony Harrison whatsoever." And he said, and of course they said, hey, you know, hey, Tim Zoo look like he hit hard. He said, look, we all hit hard. We all hit hard up there. And to, and and of course, Jamel, he's not going to linger on the ropes. He's not going to let Tim Zoo walk him down. He's not going to sit there and go back and take two steps back and linger on the ropes. Remember, he would be the A side. He will be the A side. And trust me, he's going to use every inch of that ring. But Jamel said, he fought just like they set up a game plan for. Mm-hmm. Tim Zhu always walk you down and then come and try to use the jab and try to slap you with that jab as a hook. You know, so uh, 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 I think he was sharp last night, no doubt about it. And But still, Jamel Charlo is a different type of fighter. Now, you know, so. I mean, because he'll throw that right hand. He'll, he'll plant that foot and throw that right hand behind that jab and put your ass to sleep. He ain't finna just right. jab and not throw no power punches. And he looked like he got his work rate right up in this last fight. Plus, he done oh, fought yeah. Castano. He done fought Castano twice, OG. Castano right. has right. the same style Tim Zoo got. Exactly. He, I don't think he hit right. as hard, but he got the same style. He 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 got better feet than Tim Zoo to get inside and shit, though. Tim Zoo right. got much slower feet than Castano. So, Mel and I already seen that style, man. And he hit. Mm-hmm. He cracking. So, Right. You fuck around and get cut, and he gonna let that right hand go. Like if he connect on his jab the way Tony was connecting his jab, that right hand coming right behind it, and it's gonna be a problem. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, uh, uh, like I say, um, it was a lot of points in the fight. Tim Zoo was swinging and missing, and I'm talking about missing big. Sometimes he would miss, and he get thrown off balance for a minute. He'd take that little two step, you know, get thrown off balance. Well, Jamel would counter him. Right away, he would counter him right away. Now, Tony, I, I, I don't think his reflexes were that fast, and I think he was pretty much dependent on the reflexes, you know. But it wasn't that fast; it wasn't there for. And him. Jamel got a way better chin. Yes, yes, he, he got. Hey, Jamel got a way better chin than Tony too. Right. <laughs> so, yes. so if something do get through there, Jamel be able to take it a lot better. <laughs> He'll yeah. take it a lot better than Tony, and he throws more punches than he goes to the body. You ain't even listen. I ain't saying Jamel Charlo is unbeatable. What I am saying is 
you ain't just gonna be walking to him not respecting shit. <laughs> That's what exactly. I'm saying. You ain't just gonna keep walking him against the ropes and ain't nothing mm-hmm. coming back against your ass. You you fuck around and walk him against think you're gonna walk him against the rope. That man got power in both his hands now. And when he planning to let that shit go, that shit is a problem, bro. And he, he he can hurt you to the body up top. It's a whole different animal, man. He undisputed for a reason, bro. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, and and like I say, you know, Tony Harris is not the same Tony Harrison. And he said it also in the post press conference, uh, where you know, hey, listen, he's 28 years old. I wish I can go back four years, you know, and fight him then. Uh, but you know, now me and my brother, we gotta assess some things, and, and, and I'm training the champ, Alicia Bar Gardner. And he got a couple other fighters. He has his own camp. I mean, own um, training gym. And hopefully, like you said, you know, he's training amateurs. And hopefully the amateurs can grow up and fight maybe uh, Tim Zoo amateurs. You yeah, know, so. turn Detroit turn Detroit into the new Philly or something, man. Right. Have your right. gym be there because he knows his boxing. He got, yes. he got, he got, he a damn good trainer and he was a damn good fighter. He just, yes. he done at the, I think he reached his peak, man. Like you, you're not going to see him be any better than he was in the first Jamel Charlo fight. Bro. That's right. He's not going to get like, I need people to understand it is hard. Like you, you're 32, 33 right. years old. It's hard to get better. By the time you are 30, 32, 33, you are what you are, bro. It's hard to get better. Only the select right. few, the really, really great fighters can continue to get better and continue to rise to an occasion. Tony's always been a very good fighter, but he right. never been just a great fighter. And when you got when you got four knockouts on your record, you've been knocked out four times, that's a trend, bro. It's like the book is now out on you. People know what to do with you. We just got to stay with you, be competitive the first half of the fight, and you're going to bring the fight right back to us at the end because you ain't got no win. You ain't got no gas tank. And that's all Tim Zoo did. He stayed patient. He stayed pressing Tony. And he and, and by the time the fourth or fifth round was there, Tony ain't had no more steam. He was moving around the ring. Then he couldn't move around the ring. He couldn't move around the ring no more because he was tired. And then he was right where Tim Zoo wanted him, bro. Right. He was right where he wanted him. And then it was just, it was curtains from there, man. It was curtains see, from there. And see, that's where that veteran should have kicked in at. When he got tight and couldn't move, he should have jumped out and clinched. And it held on to the referee, came and broke it up. Then go right back and clinch him, you know, and the referee break it up until you get that first warning. And then hopefully you can take a breather. Now, mm-hmm. now he's not a Floyd Mayweather. He's not a Muhammad Ali. Because these guys know how to take a break while they're fighting. Now, only special fighters know how to do that. All right? But... Tony Harrison, you know, in his heydays. Now, a lot of people say, well, KQ, how can't Tony Harrison hang it up? He's only 34 years of age, right? Mm. But see, that's a hard 34, all right? Now, just because you're only 34 years old, like I say 37, I think it's a cutoff. But yeah. some people say 34, but this is boxing. You've been hit in the head so many times since you was eight years old. Now, sometimes your brain just don't uh, work with your hands. Sometimes you just slowing down. It depends on who you fought. You know, so I'm quite sure Jamel will slow down one day. But Tony Harrison had a lot on his plate. Now, yes, he said he had a great training camp. He's not going to use that excuse. But you got a, you, you train Alicia Barb Gardner. You're traveling all over to the UK and this and that. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're training your own self, when you got someone else training you, you kind of negate what you need to do and you focus on what you got to do with her. And that's how old he looking, OG, because he only 32. Right. You said he 34. He only 32. She oh, he 30. early oh, age. Hey, yeah, he only 32, oh. man. Man. But it, but but it's an older thirty two. Some people right. just don't react good to punches, y'all. Some people yeah. like it's just life. Some people more durable. Some people die mm-hmm. younger than others. Some people die older. Some people can be in the best shape of their life and get cancer in their thirties or forties, or, or have a stroke or a heart attack. And some people can eat pork, drink fucking liquor, and and smoke yeah. cigarettes and live till they eighty years old, bro. It's just yeah. some people. Pe- People just different, man. And Tony Harrison just happened to be one of them fighters where, bro, you just, you for whatever reason, no matter how hard you train, no matter how many times you spar, your ass can't last 12 rounds, man. 
No matter how how many of these little, no matter how many of these holes you do with the with the weight, no matter how many little neck ups, he do. No matter how many of them holes, if you touch his chin, you can hurt him, bro. He just ain't got no chin. Like it ain't. It's like it's no way around the shit, man. And I I got I love how he talked. I got mad respect for Tony Harrison as a fighter and who he is mm-hmm. and, and the skills and shit. But it's just certain shit, bro. You can't you can't get around, bro. Like like the man gonna get tired, bro. I don't care how good shit. Like y- y'all could tell me Tony Harrison trained for seven months straight for a fight coming up. Mm-hmm. You know what my breakdown gonna be. Man, he's still gas at the end of the fight. Like, I don't care, bro. Like, he just showed me enough to know that he ain't got no gas tank. I don't care how strong y'all tell me he look, bro. I'm going to always be like, say, bro, if he get hit on that chin, I'm worried because the man can't take a punch. Like, right. bro, it's just right. some, some shit you can't, ain't no way around it, OG. It just is what it is, man. It's just genetics oh, yeah. and shit, man. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So, I mean, uh, um, like I say, um, I can't wait to see it. Uh, uh, the fight between Zoo and, and and Jamel, you know, I think that's gonna be a great fight. I think Jamel is gonna show him that hey, listen, me and Tony Harris are two different creatures. Now, of course, Tim Zoo, he's learning. He's learning right now. And what I'm talking about this, and Tony Harrison, he spoke on this. Stay active. Stay active. It don't have to be a top ten fighter. As long as you stay active, and then when Jamel is ready, when that hand is ready to go, then the doctor gave him the okay, the punch, or whatever. Then, oh, then you be ready. Thanks, you know, so, thanks, bro. Yeah. So, but, but look, man, that's all, all, that's all I got too, man. Shout out to everybody mm-hmm. in the building. Y'all hit the like button. Um, it's, yes, it's time sir. to give last word. I just want to say thank y'all for all the support for the morning after show. Um, we continue to grow, man, and we appreciate y'all. And um, I'll be live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week. Um, we're still working to schedule debates and stuff. So, but even if we don't have debate schedule, we're still gonna be live and have a great show planned for y'all. So y'all be sure to come by tomorrow night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. Um, and if you want to participate in the TKO debate series, hit me up. Um, check out the daily videos that we're dropping, and um, I appreciate y'all, man. That's all I got, OG. Okay, okay. Well, I appreciate everybody that came in. I appreciate everybody that came in last night. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the support today uh, um, on the Super Chat. Uh, I appreciate the attendance. I mean, we had over 2,000 people last night. I appreciate that. You know, I think, uh, uh, real quick, knock I believe that fight last night was underrated. I think it was overshadowed by the two press conferences and all SS. They put all that together right before this fight. But still in all, uh, uh, it was a exciting fight. And, 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 you know, hey, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. And I, I'm, uh, we had over 170 people in here this morning. I'm glad y'all got up. Okay, so thank you all. I appreciate you all. I will be live this week, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. All right? So make sure you come and show your love. Knockout Boston 86 TV. He will be live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yes, sir. I'm talking about three. Yes, sir. He three up. And he's three out. That's right. And don't forget, we will be live on this platform next week at 9 a.m. once again. So with that, you all have a great Sunday. And we will catch you all this week. All right? Yes, sir. And don't forget to set your clocks up. And with that, that's all I have, baby. All right? All right, y'all. Peace out. Peace, OG. i right. see you later, man. All right. Yes, sir. Take care, brother. Peace. All right, all right. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. All right. Y'all have a good one. All right. And I appreciate everybody. All right. Bellman's dad. What's good with you? All right. Thank you all for coming in. All right. Ken D. Appreciate you. Johnny Q. I appreciate you. All right. We're going to make this grow. Uh, uh, this um, uh, morning after show, we're going to make it grow. All right. Once again, uh, LaShawn Bennett, what's going on with you, brother, from Kalamazoo? All right, so everybody, you know, y'all have a good day and take it easy. All right, relax, re rest, because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna relax and rest today for the rest of the day. All right, because we got this beautiful weather here in the Windy City, baby. All right, so with that, thank you all for the support. And we got the uh, uh we got the uh pay per view giveaway at the end of this month. 
once again, like I say, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be um, giving away uh, uh, one pay-per-view. You know, I ain't no big channel, so I'm doing the best I can. Okay. I'm doing the best I can. So I'm going to give away two pay-per-views. All right. So first one going to be Earl, I mean, not Earl Spence, uh, Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia. I'm definitely going to give that away because the tickets are sold out. The tickets are sold out. Unless you're a millionaire and you get a ticket, okay, then all well. But still and all, uh, um, I want to support and give something back to you all. That's one thing about KQKC. I care about my people. What's up, Jay Reddy? Jay Reddy is a very, very, very strong supporter of KQKC Boston Network. And I thank you, Jay Reddy. All right? Yes, sir. I thank you for always supporting me. Thank you. All right? Now, uh, 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 once again, I will be giving away a pay-per-view. All right? Once again, to all channel members. Now, now I don't care. You can listen to me that night, or you can take the money, buy groceries, whatever you want with the gas, whatever. All right? The pay-per-view is $75. $75. And I will do it live so you all can see, you know, how I'm doing it and how I'm pulling from. All right? So with that, that's all I have, baby. All right? And y'all have a good, good day. All right? Now, with that, I'm out of here. And take it easy. Peace and love to y'all.